So I'm here with Jazz Bell, a Chief Content Officer at Omniphone. So hi, Jazz, and uh, thanks for joining Good the show. Afternoon. How's thanks it going? For having me. Yeah, it's yeah. going very well. It's the second day of the media marathon, so I think it's starting to wear people down. Two days down, two to go for us. Lots yeah. and lots of meetings, lots of um, really interesting people around. So it's been it's been a very good medium so far. Yeah, great, awesome. So let's talk about Omniphone. I mean, first of all, maybe let's let's do a quick intro just in case sure. people don't really know about the company because of course it's a B two B proposition. Uh, how would you introduce the company? Um, we are a provider of cloud-based music subscription services uh, via our music station platform, yep. which um, Omniphone's been around for seven or eight years. We're based in London. Um, we work with global brands such as Sony, uh, at RIM for their BlackBerry Messenger Music service, um, Sony for their Music Unlimited service. Yep. Um, and we, we operate a music station platform which is now live in 33 countries. We've got 22 million tracks ingested. And if you're a big global brand or you're, you're a company that wants to very quickly go out there and, and, and get a, a music service in the market and have something bespoke designed for you around that, then we yep. are able to leverage the scale of our platform and to do that. And we, we provide as, as much of a service as our partners want. So we, we, we can do the whole thing. In some instances, like Sony, they develop some of the clients, um, you know, for example, for the TV, and we, we do the rest. Yeah. Um, and we do the whole back-end integration, the whole content management side. And we do the licensing as well, which is you know, a very large part of what I do. Absolutely. And, and licensing is, uh, is we, we all know that it's difficult. It's, you know, it's not a biz an easy business to be in. And it must be even more difficult to do licensing for uh, you know, third-party services that might want uh, specific specific features or things that may uh, be outside of what is a generic term sheet. So, uh, you know, how much flexibility do you have on that on that department? Uh, is it relatively? Uh, not, I don't want to say easy, but relatively straightforward for you to go and, and add things to, to the licensing deal. So you no, I don't think I'd characterize it as straightforward. Um, I, I think it is a challenging, and it's one of the things as a company that, yeah. that we're able to provide to people because we've got a, you know, a team of experienced people who've come from labels, who've worked in the industry um, for a very long time. Um, and we've got some great people who are out there doing it. And a lot of it, you know, as you would imagine with any business, going out there and getting licensing deals sure. is a lot easier if you have very long-standing relationships with the industry industry if you understand their sort of concerns. One of the things we've prided ourselves on and what we, we do with working with our partners um, is we it, we think the biggest challenge is, uh, out there is, is to create something that consumers want and that, that gives you a, a differentiated service from yep. the rest of the market that, that will enable you to uh, draw people to subscription music. So we, we do a lot of experimentation, a lot of testing um, around different on-ramps to get you know, different ways of promoting services and to get consumers on. And those are often very challenging in licensing conversations. You know, and if you're talking about giving free access for a period of time and then trying to use that in a, sort of, a, a clever way to, to generate generate subscribers, then you have to have a licensing conversation. So the, you know, it, it can be challenging, but the way we approach it is we, we use lots of data, um, we look at consumer behavior, and we have very open conversations with the right owners about it, and we, we, we engage them and, uh, and um, do that. And as a result, we've ended up running, at the moment, three very, very different services. You know, the, Absolutely. The, the, the Music Unlimited service for Sony runs across all of their devices, it, you know, from the connected Blu-ray players through to the TVs and mobile phones, um, and is all about having access to your music on, uh, you know, at your fingertips on any of the any of those devices. Yeah. The, yeah, sure. The BlackBerry Messenger Music Service is a social music service. It's got a completely different business model, um, and, in, and involved a completely different um, challenge. And similarly, with um, with a Rara service, rara.com, different set of licensing challenges. We've got it out there in 33, 34 countries shortly, um, and you know all around the world in APAC and in, in Europe, um, strong in the US. Um, and that's got a very different on-ramp. We, yeah. we use a discounted introductory subscription um, package for them, and, we, and again, that's a, a different um, conversation with um, with the right owners. Yeah, sure. And uh, so. Uh, talking about uh, the way in which the services operate, so a big part also of, of the way your business succeeds is uh, for the services that you you work with to be yeah. successful services. So so that's that's a, a, an interesting place to be as well because it means that you're not just a provider of of a license. You also need to steer maybe the conversations uh, sometimes uh, well, we, yeah, with, with I mean, partners, we, we have yeah. a lot of product expertise within, yeah. within the team we have a lot of business and licensing expertise so it, it, it's you know they are partners we're not 
creating a service um, and then you know letting letting the partner sort of go off and, and do their own things. It's very much a partner. For it to work, it needs to be very much a partner relationship, and it needs to be something where we provide input on a, a, a continuing basis, and, and you know that works very very well. Certainly with the major clients. Yeah. Um, what we're looking at doing now as well is to, you know, one of the next stages for the company is to uh, see what we can do to offer access to the platform and to the, all of the tracks that we've ingested to smaller businesses. Yeah. So we're looking at creating a suite of APIs where people will be able to come and, you know, from a, it's a basic tick list, um, choose which, which elements of functionality they want to be able to run their service. And in some instances, we'll be able to provide off-the-shelf licensing as well. So we're looking at white label solution for that. So that, that will bring a whole new... Um, um, yeah, generation of smaller customers into into the realm as well. That would be amazing because, of course, you know we all know how difficult it is to go out there. And if, of course, if you're not, you know, Sony or Arara, and you don't you know, have like a, a big amount of funding behind you, it, but but you do have a, a good idea as to how you can monetize music, it's it's almost prohibitive to even think about uh, doing large scale deals or having a large yeah. catalog because it's just just the the the, the human, the, you know, the, the manpower that you need to gather those licenses is so yeah. huge that it just destroys the business before you've even started. Yeah, and I think it, driving innovation is a critical part of it. And one of the yeah. things that we're, we're trying to do with this, uh, this this new package of services is to is to have something at the lower end which will enable um, a, a very simple um, solution for people to, to get access to music to be able to actually experiment. Yeah. So to, to really drive that sort of grassroots innovation. And it's great because, of course, you know we know about the experiments that Sony has done, uh, um, EMI has done uh, with their sandboxes and, mm. and looking at working with developers on an API but even those efforts of course are limited to one label are limited to a specific catalog and they're limited in, in the scope of, of the service in that yeah. if, if they want to take the service in any way to a, to a commercial level they have to then negotiate everything directly with the, with the label and that you know becomes a, a slightly more difficult conversation the product has to be approved and, and all that so yeah. uh, of course having a service that will be third party that already has licenses across the board uh, that would really like raise the bar for developers and for you know the guys that's upstairs the working on the hack that's, day that, that, that's very much the plan to be able to be able to create an environment where people can, act, you know, where it's not a limited set of, uh, 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 of repertoire, where people have got access to everything and a fairly yeah. sort of flexible set of APIs to to call on. I mean, there's some license. You know, we're having those conversations with the rights owners now, and we we, we um, hope to be able to announce that sort of new service fairly soon. That's but awesome. Yeah, we're that's very, very excited about that part. Yeah, and of course, with all the expertise that comes with licensing for uh, large-scale uh, sort of blanket deals, uh, do you think there is a way in which uh, you know uh, either the company or you know the conversations could evolve into into working with uh, on synchronizations uh, on, on on different levels that are not just blanket, but also uh, more uh, towards get it towards video or or anything like that? Well. We, I mean, we get asked to do lots of uh, lots of licensing work, and we're involved yeah. in. Um, we we try and get involved as well in a number of sort of industry sort of uh, projects to, to drive the whole, the whole thing forward. So we're board members of DDEX. We yeah. involved in a global repertoire database project, which is really going to help on the publishing licensing yeah. side. <laughs> Finally, I, uh, music users and, and people who want to take a license to actually be able to find who owns what. Yeah. And to actually move away from, you know, in some sense, instances, you don't want a blanket license. You want to do something a little bit more interesting. You want to, do, you, know, you need to deal with the right owners directly. It's very yeah. difficult to track that through and work out what you, you know, who you, who to contact from a licensing perspective. So the global repertoire database is going to help. It's one of the objectives for, for that. It, it will deliver. Um, you know, ability for people to to see who owns what and to be able to manage that. Yeah, and, absolutely. And managing our the pan European licenses that we have and, and all of our licenses around the world as well, having much better access to publishing data means that we will be able to pay people more quickly and the whole process will become much more efficient. You know, at the end of the day it's all about making sure that the writers and the publishers and the record labels are getting paid yeah. fairly for for their work. So anything that helps the system um, uh, to work more smoothly is, is something we'd be very we're very, very supportive of. Of course, and you know you are live in thirty-three countries right now. Uh, is yep. that correct? Yeah, uh, that's that's a big number. It's, you know, it's one of the services that probably has most countries live uh, right now. And uh, a key thing for us on that as well is we, we'll only um, launch in a country where we have all of the the publishing and the collection society licensing sorted. So you you, you go, you know we. 
we do global deals with, with record labels and aggregators and then sort of top up with local content where we need to for that sort of specific market. Absolutely. It's very important to try and get all of the publishing deals in place so that when you go, you're absolutely sure that you can offer as broad a range, repertoire range to, to people as, as, as possible. Absolutely. And, you know, and that's a challenging bit as well. Of course. And, and, and talking about that, you know, of course, it, that. Uh, how, how do you approach uh, the, the the finance side of things? Like, do you take care of any uh, of the royalty distribution as well uh, uh, for your partners, or do they take take that in? No, in? no. I mean, it, it works slightly differently for the labels and for the, and for the publishers. Uh, the, the, right. It's much simpler on the label side because yeah. you have data. You know, you have an asset coming in. You have all of the uh, proprietary data. So you, you know, so you have an ISRC number and you have the barcodes, yeah. whatever, um, that enable you to. And you have a one-to-one -one relationship with every piece of content that comes in. Yeah. On the publishing side, we produce very detailed reports, and uh, and um, in in territories where you have a blanket license, it's very simply you just report. Yeah. In territories where you don't, say in Europe, where you have a pan-European licensing, we provide reports to the rights owners, and then they t they claim and tell us which, and, and then we um, which songs are theirs, and then we we try and. Uh, make sure that we're we're not overpaying or underpaying, making sure that we've got coverage for everything. Yeah, and that, absolutely. That's the ch real challenge where the global rough to our day space is going to be. A, a major yeah, I mean, help I, for and us. and I really hope that that project is gonna is gonna come off well because I work in licensing myself, and uh, yeah, I, I know how much of a pain it is to try and work out who it's owns very what. Positive. I mean, it's 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 in its design phase now. We're yeah. one of them, alongside Apple and Google. We're on the uh, working group with, with the collection societies and the writers and the publishers, and it it's a great initiative. It's a, it's the industry doing what it should do, working well together. Yeah, I mean, the, the, my only question mark on the project right now is that I have no idea of how open the access is going to be and if uh, and who is going to be able to do the research on, on, uh, on the... Uh, on the information, because uh, from what I've heard, like there's a lot of talk about the access being very restricted uh, to a specific uh, number I, of entities. I think that's so. a little bit misleading. I think oh, the, okay. the, the, all of those rules are being. We're in the design phase now, sure. um, of course, and it's probably not appropriate for me to sort of share too much about no, the, sure. the, the detail of it. But I can I can tell you very strongly our view and a view of I, I think of everybody is that there will be a level of there should be a level of access that's available to everybody. Yeah, and of course, you know, there, there are some sensitive data items in there. And Absolutely. Course, you know, if you yeah. imagine, um, in our relationship with the collection society, in our relationship that we have with the global repertoire database in the future, we'll, that we will have a contract and there'll be rules about you know, what of course. we do with the. And, and data. most of the time, you, you might have the writer information and not the splits because the publishers doesn't want to disclose that, that kind of data. So, well, but it's, it, and it's those sorts of issues that um, you know we've got to make sure that. It works for everybody, and that, and that's one of the the, the po really positive things about the, the, this project is the way that the writers, the publishers, the societies, and the the music users are all working together. Yeah. And you know, you have areas where you, you you need to. We all had to make compromises, but it's um, and that's you know, there's some sensitive yeah. issues around uh, you know sharing of data, but that, that's something we're all working together on. Absolutely, and uh, to to end the to end the conversation, I, I wanted to ask you about 2013. Uh, what what are your you know your hopes for for Omniphone in terms of business development and also what's your, what's your take on on the connected devices and how how that's going to develop for for the company? Um, well, exciting things for us. So we we're, we're we're pushing ahead with our. Um, with uh, going out there and talking to the labels and the, uh, and the, uh, the publishers and the other rights owners about about a white label license and about exp extending our content supply business, um, we bought a company called Global Media Bank last year, which is a um, it acts as a as a funnel for thousands of independent record labels around the world supplying content into you know services like ours and Spotify. We want to ex expand that side of the business. Um, a real sort of core B two B focus um, with, with Omniphone. Um, we're very excited about some work we're doing with Sony at the moment on um, high quality audio for their Music Unlimited service, which is coming soon, uh, which is going to be great. Awesome. Um, and I think that's that's a development you're going to see more and more. A few announcements over the last few days on, on on people really thinking about the quality of what they're listening to. Yeah. We have, you know, it's, it's very positive in terms of the business development conversations going on in the background, which I probably can't tell you too much of about. Of course, of course. Uh, but you know, onwards and upwards, the, the business is growing. We're very happy with it. Um, and we're, we're, we're very happy with what our partners are doing. Well, Jazz, thank, thanks so much for your time. And I hope you have a great rest of the medium. And thanks very much for having me. And same to you. Video, video, video.